Let's begin the test with our first question. And question number one states, how is the process of controlling network access to destination websites based on the URL called? Is it A, NAS? Is it B, MAC filtering? Is it C, blacklisting? Or is it D, QoS? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is D, QoS. QoS allows a network admin to change the priority of certain traffic types on the network. The network admin can, for example, configure to offer higher traffic to file transfer than other traffic. Quality of service, or QoS, is the use of mechanisms or technologies to manage traffic and to ensure the performance of critical applications. It enables organizations to adjust their overall network traffic by prioritizing specific high-performance applications. Network Attached Storage, or a NAS, is a computer that allows multiple users to store and share files in a centralized location rather than individuals storing files on their own computers. By using Network Attached Storage, documents, reports, music and videos can be shared with anyone who has access to the network, making NAS an ideal business storage solution. NAS units usually do, ha do not have a keyboard or a display and they are controlled and configured over the network, often using a browser. A MAC address, also known as a physical address, is a hardware identification number that uniquely identifies each device on a network. The MAC address is manufactured into every network card, such as an uh, Ethernet card or Wi-Fi card, and therefore cannot be changed. MAC address filtering allows you to define a list of devices and only allow those devices on your Wi-Fi network. With MAC address filtering a router of first compare a device's MAC address against an approved list of MAC addresses and only allow a device on the Wi-Fi network if its MAC address has been specifically approved. Blacklisting involves blocking access to suspicious or malicious entities. A blacklist is a real-time list that identifies IP addresses or domains that are known to send spam. They're used by organizations like Internet Service Providers, or ISPs, free mailbox providers, and uh, anti-spam vendors to prevent spam from coming into their systems. In the world of network security, a blacklist often consists of malicious software such as viruses, spyware, trojans, worms, and other kind of malware. Uh, you could also have a bl blacklist of uh, users, IP addresses, applications, email addresses, domains, processes, or organizations. You can apply blacklisting to virtually any aspect of your network. You might identify suspicious or malicious entities by their digital signatures, heuristics, and behaviors, or by other means. Blacklisting is the traditional approach to access control and has been long used by antivirus tools, spam filters, intrusion detection systems, and other security software programs. Okay, let us now jump to our next question. And question number two states, which of the following connectors can be plugged in face up or face down? Pick two. Is it A, E, SATA? Is it B, Thunderbolt? Is it C, VGA? Is it D, DVI, I? Is it E, USB-C? Or is it F, Lightning? You now have five seconds. And the correct answers are E and F, USB-C and Lightning. USB Type-C, usually referred to just as USB-C, is a relatively new connector for delivering data and power to and from computing devices. Because the USB-C plug is symmetrical, it can be inserted either way, eliminating the frustrations of earlier USB ports and putting it on a par with Apple's reversible Lightning plug. The Apple Lightning Cable is Apple's standard charging cable for most devices including iPhones and iPads. The Apple Lightning to USB cable can connect directly to your computer or laptop for easy charging and data transfers. eSATA stands for External Serial Advanced Technology Attachment. eSATA are a variation of the SATA interface that supports external storage devices. It was standardized in 2004 and uses the same pins and the same protocols as internal SATA. It is often used for external disk drives as well as cameras, keyboards, mice, etc. eSATA is a SATA interface with external connectors on the PC designed for talking to external disk drives outside the case. The connector in the cable is slightly different from an internal SATA cable. Thunderbolt, you can use it to connect your Mac or PC to displays, transfer data quickly between computers and hard drives, and daisy-chain external devices. Thunderbolt 3 uses the same design as a familiar USB Type-C connector. Thunderbolt is a relatively new technology that supports high-resolution displays and high-performance data through one single port, but the connectivity allows you to add several devices to your computer through a daisy-chain of cords. VGA stands for Video Graphics Array. A VGA cable is a device used to transfer video signals. It does this by acting as a link between the computer and the monitor or between the computer and the television screen. VGA is an analog interface. 
DVI or Digital Visual Interface is a digital video interface developed by the Digital Display Working Group. DVI-I cables are integrated cables which are capable of transmitting either a digital to digital signal or an analog to analog signal. This makes it a more versatile cable, being usable in either digital or analog situations. Like any other format, DVI digital and analog formats are non-interchangeable. Okay, let us now jump to our next question. And question number three states, you have been tasked with building a new desktop and in your build, you should include the following components, four HDDs, 10,000 RPMs, and a gigabit NIC. You have been asked to also build a RAID 5 array with the four HDDs provided to you. Which of the following devices are you most likely building? Is it A, a touchscreen cask? Is it B, a thick client? Is it C, a thin client? Is it D, a CAD CAM device? Or is it E, a NAS? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is E, a NAS. We have already talked about what a NAS device is in uh, question number one. So uh, touchscreen information kiosk is fundamentally an input device housed in a special container that functions through physical touch upon the touchscreen. They offer a cost-effective solution. Thick clients, also called heavy clients, are full-featured computers that are connected to a network. Unlike thin clients, which lack hard drives and other features, thick clients are functional whether they are connected to a network or not. In computer networking, a thin client is a simple low-performance computer that has been optimized for establishing a remote connection with a server-based computing environment. The server does most of the work, which can include launching software programs, performing calculations and storing data. And computer-aided design or computer-aided manufacturing or CAD-CAM is a combination of the two terms CAD and CAM to describe the software that is used to design and manufacture prototypes, finished products and product runs. Its specifications are as follows, high-speed SSD, solid-state drive, high-end graphics and as much RAM or random access memory as you can get. Okay, let us now jump to our next question. And question number four states, you have been asked by your manager to transfer some files from his Android smartphone to his laptop. Which of the following cables will you most likely be using? Is it A, RJ11? Is it B, USB-C? Is it C, RJ45? Is it D, DB9? Or is it E, RS232? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is, of course, B, a USB-C. We already talked about what a USB-C is, so jumping straight to RJ11, more commonly known as a modem port, phone connector, phone jack, or phone line, the register jack 11 or RJ11 is basically your telephone line which consists of two wires along all which all data must travel. RJ11 is also known as 6P4C, that means 6 position 4 conductor, used for ADSL, telephone and modem cables. RJ45, 8P8C. Basically, RJ11 and RJ45 are the cable connectors having their own particular uses. The major differences between these two types of jacks are given below. RJ45 is bigger in size than RJ11. RJ45 has 8 wires inside, whereas RJ11 has 4 wires. You cannot plug in RJ45 cable connector into an RJ11 interface or port or slot. However, you can do the opposite, but you should always avoid doing so because it can damage the RJ45 port. RJ45 connector cables are used in networking, whereas RJ11 connector cables are used in telephone lines slash sets. In other words, RJ45 is mostly used with Ethernet cables, whereas RJ11 in connecting telephone units. DB9 and RS232 RS-232 is the definition of the serial interface, for example, the signal voltage and its duration. DB9 is the 9-pin connector. RS-232 connections are frequently implemented using these connectors, but there's also a 25-pin connector. Think about DB9 as the form factor of the connector, the physical style of it and the pin count, and the RS-232 would describe the communication used very commonly in the DB9 or DB25 connector. Okay, let us now pass to our next question. And question number five states, you have just bought yourself a new laptop, but on closer analysis, your internet transfer speeds seem much slower than your older laptop. Which of the following could be the cause of this problem? Is it A, your laptop is missing drivers? Is it B, OS needs to be updated? Is it C, there is an issue with the duplex settings? Is it D, the DHCP server is down? Or is it E, the DNS server is down? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is C. There is an issue with the duplex settings. 
In telecommunication, duplex communication means that both ends of the communication can send and receive signals simultaneously. In a full duplex system, both parties can communicate with each other at the same time. In a half duplex or semi duplex system, both parties can communicate with each other but not simultaneously. The communication is one direction at a time. Ok, let us now analyze the incorrect answers, but before that let us make sure that you know what a driver is. A driver or device driver is a set of files that tells a piece of hardware how to function by communicating with the computer's operating system. All pieces of hardware require a driver, from your internal computer components such as your graphics card, to your external peripherals like a printer. Ok, when talking about option A and D, your laptop is missing drivers and the DHCP server is down. In these two cases the result would be the same, you won't have an internet connection at all. If you would be missing some laptop drivers like your NIC or network interface car driver, you won't have an internet connection altogether. The operating system would not know how to talk to your network interface card. Remember that the driver acts as a translator between your operating system and the piece of hardware itself like a NIC or a graphics card etc. Make sure that you are familiar with the acronyms such as what a NIC is, what a SAN is etc. Assuming that your computer is set to get the IP address dynamically instead of statically, if a DHCP server fails or goes offline, you would not have an internet connection at all. Without DHCP, you'd need to go to each computer and manually assign it an IP address, subnet mask, default gateway and other network settings. Ok, so when we're talking about option B and E, not updating your OS or operating system and having a DNS server down, may affect your internet connection but not by a significant margin. Remember to read the question carefully, don't rush. The issue presented to us states that the internet connection is much slower. In case of having a DNS server down, your computer would likely find another DNS server to use instead. Ok, let us now pass to our next question, and question number 6 states which device runs at layer 2 and makes forwarding decisions based on MAC addresses? Is it A, a router? Is it B, a hub? Is it C, a repeater? Or is it D, a switch? You now have 5 seconds. And the correct answer is D, a switch. Network switches can operate at either OSI layer 2, the data link layer, or layer 3, the network layer. Layer 2 switches forward data based on the destination MAC address, whilst layer 3 switches forward data based on the destination IP address. Some switches can do both. Ok, let us now analyze the incorrect answers. A router is a hardware device that has the function of routing packets between networks. A router works at layer 3 of the OSI model, the network layer. This is the layer that IP protocol works at. A hub is a layer 1 device and operates only in the physical network of the OSI model. Since it works in the physical layer, it mainly deals with the data in the form of bits or, elect or electrical signals. A hub is mainly used to create a network and connect devices on the same network only. A hub is not an intelligent device. It forwards the incoming messages to other devices without checking for any errors or processing it. It does not maintain any address table for connected devices. It only knows that the device is connected to one of its ports. And repeaters are network devices operating at physical layer of the OSI model that amplify or regenerate an incoming signal before retransmitting it. They are incorporated in networks to expand its coverage area. They are also known as signal boosters. Repeaters operate at the physical layer of the OSI, Open System Interconnect or Layer 1. Ok, let us now pass to our next question. And question number 7 states, which of the following devices runs at layer 3 of the OSI model? Is it A, a hub? Is it B, a bridge? Is it C, a managed switch? Is it D, a router? Or is it E, a WAP? You now have 5 seconds. And the correct answer is D, a router. The job of a router is to connect networks together like your LAN or local area network and the outside world or the internet. A router acts as a dispatcher choosing the best route for your information to travel. It works at layer 3 of the OSI or Open System Interconnect model. Ok, let us now analyze the incorrect answers. We already talked about what a hub is so we were gonna move forward with the next options. A bridge is a network device that connects multiple LANs or local area networks together to form a larger LAN. The process of aggregating networks is called the network bridging. A bridge connects the different components so that they appear as part of a single network. Bridges operate at the data link layer of the OSI model and hence also referred to as layer 2 switches. A managed switch is a device that can be configured and properly managed to offer a more tailored experience to those who will be utilizing the box. This not only offers tools and the means to monitor the network but also control over traffic. 
Managed switches are typically more complex and require some skill to set up and maintain, but allow for greater control over the network. Unmanaged switches are plug-and-play devices that come with a fixed configuration that cannot be changed but still provides an Ethernet connection. And for the last incorrect answer, a WAP. In computer networking, a wireless access point, or a WAP, or more generally just access point or AP, is a networking hardware device that allows other Wi-Fi devices to connect to a wired network. AP serves as a connectivity provider for clients on wireless. It maintains MAC entries against each client. It works on layer 2 and mostly can be said as a connectivity provider between wired and wireless. Okay, let us now pass to our next question. And question number 8 states, what would most likely be categorized as a MAN? A. A connection between offices located in different countries. B. A connection between offices located in the same campus. C. A connection between offices located in the same city. Or is it D. A connection between offices located in the same building. You now have 5 seconds. And the correct answer is C, a connection between offices located in the same city. A metropolitan area network, or a MAN, is a computer network that connects computers within a metropolitan area, which could be a single large city, multiple cities and towns, or any given large area with multiple buildings. A MAN is larger than a local area network, or a LAN, but smaller than a wide area network, or a WAN. MANs do not have to be in urban areas. The term metropolitan implies the size of the network, not the demographics of the area that it serves. A wide area network or a WAN is a network that exists over a large scale geographical area as compared to other network types such as a local area network or a LAN. A WAN connects different smaller networks including local area networks or LANs and metro area networks or MANs so that computers and users in one location can communicate with computers and users in other locations. WAN implementation can be done through either a public transmission system or a private network. A campus area network, or a CAN, is a computer network that spans a limited geographic area. Campus area networks interconnect multiple local area networks or LANs within an educational or corporate campus. Most CANs connect to the public internet. And the local area network, or a LAN, is a collection of devices connected together in one physical location, such as a building, office, or home. A LAN can be small or large, ranging from a home network with one user to an enterprise network with thousands of users and devices in an office or school. Regardless of size, a LAN's single defining characteristic is that it connects devices that are in a single limited area. In contrast, a wide area network or a WAN or a metropolitan area network or a MAN covers a larger geographic area. Some WANs and MANs connect many LANs together. Okay, let us now pass to our next question. And question number 9 states, James is a network engineer and would like to connect two buildings together that are 600 meters apart. Which of the following options would be the best approach to resolve this issue? Is it A, CAT3? Is it B, CAT6? Is it C, Fiber? Is it D, Coax? Or is it E, STP? You now have 5 seconds. And the correct answer is C, Fiber. A fiber optic cable is a network cable that contains strands of glass fibers inside an insulated casing. They're designed for long-distance, high-performance data networking and telecommunications. Compared to wired cables, fiber optic cables provide higher bandwidth and transmit data over longer distances. There are two types of fiber optic cables, multi-mode and single-mode. As presented in the chart below, you can expect a minimum transmission range of 2 kilometers or 1.2 miles with a multi-mode connection and a 40 kilometers or 20 25 miles on a single mode connection. Okay, now for the incorrect answers. Category 3 cables or CAT3 cables and Category 6 cables or CAT6 cables are types of unshielded twisted pair or UTP cables that are used for voice and data communications in computer and telecommunications networks that are basically your everyday Ethernet cables. Both categories have a limit of 100 meters transmission range. Ethernet copper twisted pair cables are broadly classified into two, unshielded twisted pair or UTP cable and shielded twisted pair or STP cable. Shielded twisted pair cable or STP uses different shielding techniques to limit any signal from the cable or wire to escape and reduce electromagnetic interference from outside environment. And the coax cable or a coaxial cable is commonly used by cable operators, telephone companies and internet providers around the world to convey data, video and voice communications to customers. And for the last question of our exam, question number 10. And the question states, John would like to configure a tablet device in order to receive emails from an email server. Which of the following protocols should he configure in order to achieve this goal? 
Is it A, POP3? Is it B, SMB? Is it C, LDAP? Is it D, RDP? Or is it E, DHCP? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is A, POP3. POP3 or Post Office Protocol version 3 is a standard mail protocol used to receive emails from a remote server to a local email client. POP3 allows you to download email messages on your local computer and then read them even when you are offline. SMB or the Server Message Block is a network protocol that enables users to communicate with remote computers and servers to use their resources or share open and edit files. It's also referred to as Server Slash Client Protocol as the server has a resource that can share with the client. Lightweight Directory Access Protocol, or LDAP, is a software protocol that stores and arranges data to make it easily searchable. The data can be any information about organizations, devices, or users stored in directories. LDAP is the protocol used by servers to speak with on-premise directories. The Windows Remote Desktop Connection tool gives the users the ability to connect to a remote Windows PC or server over the internet or on a local network, giving them full access to the tools and software installed on it. Uh, this is made possible by Microsoft's own Remote Desktop Protocol, or RDP for short. All Windows PCs and servers can use RDP to connect to another Windows device, but only certain versions of Windows allows RDP connections. The Remote Desktop Protocol allows remote users to see and use Windows on a device in another location. Key peripherals like your keyboard and mouse are shared with the remote machine, allowing you to use it and control it as if you were sat in front of it. And we have already discussed about what a DHCP is, so there's no point on going back on that. Ladies and gents, thank you very much for your time and support and don't forget to sub and share this clip. I hope this video has been informative and I'll see you guys next time. Peace!